guys! For this video, I'm going to teach you how to edit screen maskings in replacement just like this. So all this time, it was just a green screen. Screen masking is one of the techniques I used before in my previous videos. Like my vlog number 3. My second precision tutorial. And on my latest video which is on my intro. So we're gonna do some tracking for us to get the three-dimensional perspective data of the shot. Then export the corner pin data to After Effects afterwards. So before we start, here's the behind the scene of the shot that we will edit. And here's the before and after of the edited video. Also, we can use this method even we don't have a green screen. We just use a green screen for this tutorial to make it easier and faster for the sake of this video. And take note that we will use Adobe After Effects with Mocha Pro plugin for this. So, let's start with the editing. So once we're in Adobe Premiere Pro, let's import the clip that we're going to edit, which is also provided on the link in the description below. So, you can try to edit and practice at your home. So as you can see, there's a warning but just click Keep Existing Settings. And now, we can see that our footage was zoomed in because we shot this clip in 4K while we're having a 1080p timeline. So to fix that, select your clip, right-click, then select Set to Frame Size. To proceed, select our clip again, right-click, then choose Replace with After Effects Composition. And now that we're in After Effects, let's name our file as Edit Screen Replacement. Click save. And now let's watch our clip. Okay, so the first thing to do is to pre-compose your layer, which is uh, Control shift c Then select Move All Attributes into the new composition and select OK. After that, let's search our Mocha Pro plugin on the Effects tab, then put it in our clip. And to proceed, select Launch Mocha Pro. So since we have a green screen and a lot of trackers on it, let's start to track at the end of the clip so that we can see the image clearer and larger. So these four tracking marks are the one that we're going to track. Now let's zoom into our image which is letter Z and letter X to pan around our clip. So let's start by selecting four of these trackers. So let's have a look. So to start, Click Create an X-Spline and select a good point wherein we can put our trackers on our tracking marks. Zoom in, zoom out, then let's do it on all the tracker marks. And make sure that you're doing it accurately because every pixel has a lot to do on our footage. So once we're done creating our tracking points, right-click on your mouse, then move these blue bars on each side of the tracking points. So next, click Show Planner Surface. Planner Surface is the one that we will set to change our screen. So now let's move our Planner Surface tool to each of the every corners of the screen that we will replace. And make sure to have a small space or allowance so that after tracking, the greens at the edges won't appear. So once we select our planner grids, we should see that the grids are at the same perspective as the screen that we're going to track. If not, then we align the planner surface tool. So in our case, it's perfectly at the same perspective. And to double check, let's try to insert a clip to see if it fits our screen. Perfect! Before we start tracking, let's change the minimum percentage pixels used to 100, and select Translation, Scale, Rotation, Shear, and Perspective. 
Once we're done, click track backwards. And as you can see, Mocha Pro is doing an amazing job tracking your footage. Now, let's zoom in and check if there's a drift in tracking. Which is, yes, a little bit of drift. But I think once we put a clip, it should be a noticeable. So now that we're done tracking in Mocha, let's get back to After Effects by exporting our data and selecting After Effects corner pin only the text. Click Cup to Clipboard and let's do it twice to make sure. Now let's close Mocha Pro and create a new white solid in After Effects. Because in this white solid, we will paste our data or our tracking data that we got in Mocha Pro. So make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 pixels, then click OK. Now let's paste our tracking data to our white solid and boom! We have our tracking data or corner pin data in our screen. Now here's the fun part. If we pre-compose our layer and leave all attributes on that layer, everything we put on that layer will be part of our screen. So now let's open our pre-composed white solid and let's import something that will replace our screen. Which is some... Um, I choose this movie called Apocalypto which is directed by Mel Gibson. Um, really really good movie. huh? So let's select a part that we're going to put on our screen. Mark in... Right here. Mark out. Now let's place this footage on the top of our white solid. And now let's try to get back to our main composition. Nice! Now that's how you replace a screen. But as you can see and as we zoom in, there's a little green screen at the edges. Because a while ago, we saw a drift in tracking, right? So let's try to fix that. Let's create an adjustment layer and rename it to the saturate green screen. Put the layer under a white pre-composed layer, which is our screen. Go to effects and presets, then select U and saturation effect. Let's put it on our layer. And now let's try to zoom in and check for the leftover green screens. To remove that, select the pen tool and draw on the leftover green screens. Let's create another one for the bottom. Once that we're done, go to our U and saturation effect then select the green channel. Now, let's move the saturation down to zero to desaturate the greens completely. Okay, we're not done yet. Same goes to our yellows, desaturate it by 100% and boom! No more leftover green screens. So once we're done, Let's animate our mask from the start to the end of the clip to desaturate the leftover green screens completely. So we're almost done, and to make sure to make the screen more realistic, let's add some reflection layer which is also provided on the link on the description below. Let's scale it up until it fills the whole screen completely. Then after that, let's change the blending mode to screen and adjust the opacity to your liking. So I noticed that the clip is very high definition, so let's add some Gaussian blur for it to match the quality of our shot. So once we're done, save your project, then get back to Premiere Pro. Okay, so the final thing to do is to render our clip, and alright! So here's our final product. Well done! So guys, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, don't hesitate to ask me because I'll try my best to answer your questions on the comment section. And if you have any suggestions that we can do for our next video, just comment down below. And before I end, I want to thank Epidemic Sound for providing me the music and sound effects that are used on this video, which is entitled Back in the Days by My Life. And if you also want to use the music and sound effects that I use for my videos, you can check the link on the description down below and you can have a 30 day free trial. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. And I hope that everyone is safe, physically and mentally healthy. Have a great day and God bless.